So our Siege of London is about to begin. This is kind of perfect. As America kind of spawning next to uh, the English, this ended up being a pretty kind of ironic campaign. So we're going to begin to attack the city next turn. I think we're still moving our units nearby. Uh, we will be talking. We'll, I'm sorry. We will be talking. We'll be talking to the river. We're going to be crossing the river. Uh, that's just something that I wasn't willing to wasn't willing to just wait until we get you know as many units so that we didn't I, I didn't think it really mattered I think we had too many units anyways uh, to worry to worry about that river crossing penalty for melee attack in the city uh, there are the pikemen I'm not sure if I rushed that or not I might have rushed the knight instead lumber mill I did need the lumber mill lumber mill well you know in Civ 5 the lumber will, lumber mill was pretty deep in the tech tree too so I guess it's not all that surprising but um, you know, I'm 79 turns into a quick game. Lumber mill's pretty deep into that tech tree. Something to keep in mind. Chopping a forest down might be something, uh, maybe a little bit more... Maybe a little bit more done because you don't want to wait that long. If it, if it is, in fact, long. Okay, so we're seeing a little bit of, uh... We're seeing some statistics in the... In the window down below. But not for some of the units. That's the interesting thing. Ooh, let me keep an eye on that embarked warrior that England has. Are you retreating, or what are you doing exactly? Yes, you are. Because I know that London has, England has an additional city just to the north. They also have a builder, kind of just walking around, chilling. I don't underrate the value Hanging gardens. But if men make war okay, so yeah, this is, uh, this is another one. Like I said, this is the point where I'm starting to get confused because there's so many policies and, and they're and they're popping up so quick and I'm, I'm assuming it's because of quick difficulty, quick time, I should say. But um, for, for one, either way, I think the new policies should be should be highlighted somehow. There's got to be some sort of notification showing us which are the new ones that we just got and that's why this is popping up. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that, yeah, so four turns, 11 turns, eight turns, or maybe there, you know, maybe there's too many Eure Eureka moments for the civics. I know that you have to get down the entire tree, the entire civic tree. Two damage. This is not showing. This. Base strength, heavy chariot. Negative two damage. District. I mean, this is on this side of things, though. River defense, wall defense. Plus two from districts. It has a base strength of uh, 25. Hmm. And also, are you getting penalties for pillaging districts or being on top of districts or something? So we know that, like, you can pillage. You have to pillage districts at a time. You have to uh, slowly grind away at districts. So if you have three buildings inside of a district, you need to pillage that three different times, which is going to be a really really important change again I didn't do any pillaging of my own because I didn't need to but that would be an important change that you may have to risk taking the city of bombardment so that you can pillage a district entirely and you could really ruin somebody's somebody's science production in that sense so yeah I'm going to take the penalty again from attacking across the river and we should be fine Maybe there will be a few more. No, I, I mean, I'm not seeing anything. Any great general information showing us. Nope, yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't see anything. In terms of great general stuff. Uh, so, these siege units, another question I might have, or I have, is what would happen to the siege units if a unit hit it? Does it have its own defense? I believe it does. It just can't do anything back. I don't think it's going to get just taken like a civilian unit. You'll probably have to grind it down. Maybe. You know how like when civilian units sometimes have uh, health when you range attack them? They usually have like three attacks. Which I thought was kind of too much, to be honest. But um, in Civ 5, so like if you were to, you know, let's say hit some workers with an archer... Or with the city of bombardment of something, you'd have to hit it three times before it dies. I'm thinking one. I mean, those are workers, you know? For civilian units, for builders, traders, I mean, that should be one time. If you send some some military forces at a, a pack of civilians, 
yeah, they're probably all gonna die. Maybe you give a slight chance that one survives? I don't know. But, um, that's the way I see it. I think that that would be a little bit more reasonable. Okay, so London is ours. I've got multiple melee attacks still left, even though my warrior and my spearman just west of London is not, they're not doing too well. Yeah, definitely not doing too well. So I think I'm going to attack with my spearman. Actually, that chariot, everything to the to the west of London is not doing well. Because my heavy chariot is not, not in a good position either. But either way, here goes the fall of London. I do believe I remember seeing a raised city option, even though it is a capital. So there might be slightly different terms of, well, let's see, maybe not. I know that we saw, we did see that for the E3 demo though, and I didn't see it right now. So maybe that, maybe that changed, but I know that when we did our E3 demo gameplay breakdown, that was something that I was really interested in, but uh, apparently, apparently not. I was going to say, because if that was the case, you'd have to completely redefine the domination victory. Oh, it, it is there. So that, so then I'm right. We do have to redefine. Thanks for your kind endeavors. Do you have to, continent we share. do you have to hold every capital or do you just have to take a capital at one point? Even if you raise it, it's fine. It makes sense though, because the cities are so much bigger in itself because they're sprawling cities that you'd want to raise other, you know, enemy cities after you just killed the population. Also, did we kill any population? We did not. I mean, some of them might have starved. Let's see, we're at 234.40. On the continent we share. And... Oops. I think some people were starving. I think they starved, but I don't know if we killed civilians. That's the question. Either way, it's at, at the moment, it's not it doesn't go down by half. At the moment, you're not killing half the population within the city. That's a pretty big deal. That is a pretty massive deal. Huh. Well, anyways, that will be interesting kind of look into for later yeah Manchester's there and I imagine there's probably that was probably another way uh, another area where uh Civ stayed Ooh, interesting he doesn't she does not like couldn't see who that was she actually had a lot of cities look at this London oh wait no that's me never mind never mind never mind Drew oh geez yeah that's her I think that is her only city because that's her capital it's only at three population I'd imagine it would go to her biggest population city I doubt she has something two or one at the moment, so I think that is her last city. I'm pretty sure it is. So maybe there isn't... Well, there might have been something just north of Manchester. I mean, I didn't see it. So, we see the Japanese here with... Um, we're going to figure it out. But I don't know what was going on. Oh, oh, nice. I forgot that I was building this wonder. I just wanted to build, build a wonder just because... Just because why not? Uh, we've already seen this Wonder movie, though. But I figured I, I would build a Wonder. Love the day and night cycle. Really cool. Day and night cycle is looking really cool. I think they should remove, even if I have yield on, they shouldn't let you put the yield on for the Wonder movies. That's what, that's just that's just what I'm thinking. Are you mad? Uh, oh, yes. I think that's you saying that you're mad. Oh, well, either way. So there we go. There, are, I'll turn off the yield icons now. Because I noticed it during that Wonder movie. I was like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have those on. So right now, at the moment, when you, when you select a builder or a settler, the yield doesn't automatically turn on. And that's a, a very small quality of life feature that I love from Civ 5 that took a long time to implement. But um, it is really, really important. I remember Beyond Earth didn't do the same thing either. When I was first playing kind of early builds of Beyond Earth, it was it sucked to not you know have that that worker or settler uh, selected, and then have to go and turn on the the yield icons. So yeah, right now I've got I've got an escort mission on with my melee 
and civilians. So what I'm, uh, you know, I'm getting lazy here. Um, I'm, I'm putting everybody on, on just to rest. The plan would maybe to have been destroy Manchester, but you will see something that happens here. Stonehenge has been constructed, constructed by an unmet player. I want it, Stonehenge. Not really. Uh, but yeah, there's the Apostles. So imagine the Apostles... I actually don't know if I can say... I don't even know much about the Apostles. I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything about the Apostles, but... Either way, I am not even 100% about what they are. So I'm not going to say anything, but uh, I, I believe I was asking questions about uh, what those were. Okay, so let's come here. But yeah, Japan was doing something, but they... Well, Japan was probably bugged out with these Apostles, because they weren't doing anything. They weren't doing anything for some reason. Japan likes my unique culture. And that's, uh, that's kind of really cool coming from him. I'm sure that's, that's kind of a planned thing, obviously. Something that was supposed to happen. Okay, so um, at this point, I am going to show... Well, let's see here. Where is it at? Oh, okay, there we go. So, does anybody see... Oh, I, did I... What did I... I built another wonder? Yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a bug. The Hanging Gardens was supposed to be... Supposed to stay in London. But, uh... For some reason, it gave me the... I, I destroyed it, and it gave me the option to build it back in my own capital. That was weird. Must have been an early idea. That, to me, sounds like an early sort of balance thing that they were probably trying out. Um... Because it seemed like an interesting concept. That's just my guess. I don't know. I don't know. If confirmed. But uh, I think the map looks really well so far. Like as uh, you know, kind of mid mid game here, as we're filling out the tiles nearby. I think it looks really cool. Uh, big exclamation mark was appearing for everybody for the holy sites, which is kind of a strange thing. It's time to work those those hill tiles. Yes, I know I should have built the Petra. I realize I should have built the Petra on in New Orleans. Um, I don't know what I was doing actually. I think there was a reason why, but I I didn't. Yeah, there was a reason why I didn't build the Petra. I'm kind of concerned about these uh, apostles. One thing I can say is that. Um, Yeah, uh, well, no, you know what, I can't say, I can't say anything there. I'll look up and, and see if I can, but, um, not the biggest detail, but it's just kind of interesting. So I need to purchase more units inside of Los Angeles, because Los Angeles kind of sucks right now. Okay, so, I don't know, maybe you were getting the vibe, I don't know if I was getting the vibe at this moment, but I'm seeing a Japanese slinger and uh, a Japanese warrior just east of Washington. What do you think is going to happen? I'm just so busy next turning my way because I know I only have 150 turns. I have at max 150 turns, but, um, you know, I'm only at turn 88 and it's 1230 at this time. I only have like, I don't know, something like 30 minutes with the game. So I'm just trying to go a little bit quicker. A little bit faster. Trying these guys out. Those, uh, those Apostle units have have promotions which is kind of interesting okay so yeah uh, the Japanese declared war on me I, and I should have to be honest I, I should have realized that I should have realized that that was gonna be a thing and I am looking at this and I'm like holy crap I am screwed I was really impressed with the AI really impressed because they came out of nowhere like I didn't even see a single unit they also had to navigate through these you know these valleys I was I was shocked. I loved it. This was probably the most impressive AI move that I had seen. So um, I really liked that. I love when an AI pulls, you know, you know, somehow finds a way to trick me or something like that. Like that's that's a really good start, I think. So um, really impressed by that. That was probably my favorite moment. I mean, they did the kind of the same thing that English did. Luckily, I had just happened to be in that area to to have seen them launch their sneak attack, though. So that was kind of the uh, the difference. Yeah, so that was kind of the difference there. But So now I'm kind of crapping my pants because I'm like, oh my gosh, I am going to be the only person here to 
to lose my capital because I got lazy and I have all of my military like really far away. So I, I've, I've, I've got to pull some stuff here. So one thing though that I didn't want to do is pull everybody back at the same time. That is guaranteeing to be a big mistake, I think. Um, this is when I realized that I wasn't able to move any faster on, on the roads, which was disappointing. Um, but yeah, so I'm crapping my pants right now. I don't want to bring all the units back from London. I want to still keep them there because I had imagined that Queen Victoria would probably uh, attack me. It looks like the AI... I, I must appear weak to the AI. So I had imagined that either China or Queen Victoria would come after me and try to take London and Leeds away. Because I look... You know, military-wise, I, I must not look that strong. So there's monarchy. That's that's definitely the next government type that I would have wanted because it offers three um, military slots and I believe one or two wildcard slots. So the possibility of having like, you know, five military policies really really helpful. So that would have been cool. And now it's time to make our way. And uh, at this point, I'm trying to figure out the best way because I'm trying. I'm trying to purchase units. Luckily, I had about a you know I'm making 15.9 per turn. Um, I've got 170 stockpiled, so I've, I'm feeling I'm feeling like I should probably be able to buy at least one thing pretty strong. Or if I could maybe sell something. That's something I didn't think about. Well, I don't know. So in Civ Five, when you delete a unit, you get instant gold. You get a little bit of instant gold, right? Or does that just wait? Or maybe that just shaves off your. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. Ah, geez, that's funny. I can't me remember a very simple mechanic, but um, I know that you obviously get the extra maintenance. Still, deleting a unit back in London would have been a little bit more helpful so that I get more gold per turn. So that would have been kind of cool to have done. <laughs> so I'm trying to address the situation. I'm facing three melee units all near my capital. I also have a trader. Luckily, it's going to La Laventa. So it's kind of going away from us. And they also have a range unit with them. If if they had just one spearman or maybe just one swordsman or for a horseman unit or something, then uh, then they would have just completely destroyed me. I mean, I probably would have gotten... Oh, yeah, that's right. I see a fifth warrior. And I'm like, oh, crap. Um, I mean, I, have, I could have probably taken my capital back, but that would have taken time, obviously. It wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been an easy task. More science intervenes in warfare. Yeah, no, that wouldn't have been easy at all. Okay, so my archer is gonna be the first one. I at this point I'm just hoping I'm just hoping that the archers distract. Become some sort of a distraction, at the very least. Just act as a distraction, please. And uh and then yeah. But uh but anyways guys, I'm gonna stop right there. We will return for our last video as I defend against the Japanese, and we'll see what happens. So yeah, very impressive AI move by the Japanese there. They caught me with my pants down, and uh, we'll see if we can recover from this. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.